This is part two of e-bike version 9.0. We're going over some designs, we're digging into quite a bit of fabrication, and even attempting some things I've never done, so you're going to get to witness that train wreck. It's a lot of fun, so let's go. If you weren't here for part one, let me get you up to speed. This is my second e-bike, which is also now my ninth e-bike because I'm rebuilding it with some much more powerful components like this giant ass battery. The battery is so big it doesn't fit in the frame, so I had to make a cardboard mock-up of it because I didn't want to lug around 45 pounds everywhere. I also did some 3D modeling so I could even visualize how I'm going to address this problem here. After deciding upon the best design I could come up with, I started hacking away at the case and we actually got pretty far enough to fit the mock-up battery inside of it and that was a pretty big milestone. And here we are, you are now up to speed. And just because that battery now fits in the frame doesn't mean I can just leave it like that. I mean, well, I could leave it, but we're probably better off with some reinforcements. The battery actually fits so tightly that it is now a structural component of the frame. I probably did spend a little bit too much time making these 3D renderings, but I wanted to make sure that not only was this going to be structurally sound, but also kind of look a little better than just some bars over the hole. My first design kind of hugged the battery very tightly, and I realized I probably didn't need that and might actually be safer if I have some padding and foam between those pieces. So this is my final design. I added some cross braces and I tucked the front end a little bit to just change the design and give it a little bit of a different look. I'm not sure if I actually need the cross braces, but they're something that I can add later. So I'm gonna test how flexible it is and then go from there. I tried everything to fit the controller inside of the case compartment, but yeah, it's just not gonna fit. So this is the only place that I can really put it that looks somewhat decent. And I will be building my own seat. I don't have that fully figured out, but I did start playing around with some initial design. So if you guys have any ideas for how I should do the seat, let me know. I really want to go for a minimal look or something different that looks skeletonized, kind of like how this design I have here, but it's not finalized, so I still, this could look very different by the end of it. If I need to, I will thicken up the material on those thinner beams right there, and I might throw on a very minimalistic kind of side panel where you can still see the battery. I don't know yet about that part, but this is the main design for right now. The materials I'm going to be using to build this truss or trellis structure is going to be out of mild steel. It is half inch square tubing with two millimeter wall thickness. Admittedly, this is probably overkill when you compare it to what this part is going to be replacing. The part I cut out was probably only one and a half mil and that was just sheet metal. So this is going to be way stronger than that. I chose this material for a number of reasons. One of them is that it's readily available and pretty cheap. It's mild steel, so it should be somewhat easier to weld than say stainless or aluminum. It has flat sides, which are gonna make it easier to mount things and bolt things through it. And finally, it's not going to weigh a ton due to the skeletonized kind of open air structure that I've come up with. And as an added bonus, I just think it looks pretty cool. I could have went with round tubing, I could have went with L brackets, I could have done almost anything to fill in this gap and make this structure strong, but I just thought that this would tick all the boxes that I wanted. This was also going to be my first ever welding project and I figured this kind of material would have been a little easier than some sheet metal or even round tube, so that's another reason why I went with this. I should have used a chop saw to cut these because it's kind of hard to get a very clean and accurate cut on 90 degree angles with an angle grinder. Although you can get pretty close and then kind of clean up after which is what I did. Now I am kind of just freehanding this. I'm not measuring any of the angles or using any kind of like extreme measurements because the angles on this bike are not 45s or 90s. They're all kind of at these weird angles. I could have made this design with almost nearly all flat pieces, which definitely would have been easier because I wouldn't have to deal with all these kind of weird angles, but I figured I might as well give myself a challenge, right? I also figured I had a little leeway with the welding, so even if the cuts weren't perfect, I'd still be all right. 
One tool that helped me out quite a bit were these neodymium magnets that I pulled out of some old hard drives. I've had these for a while and they actually make really good mock-up holders. I did experiment with trying to get the most precise cuts out of the angle grinder and I found that flipping it and cutting each side individually was actually better than just chopping all the way through. Here are some of the smaller angles and it wasn't that hard to get these small ones to line up but once you start adding a bunch of them and trying to connect them all this thing got very precarious pretty quickly. This is my very first time doing almost any kind of metal fabrication so yeah if you're seeing things that are pretty cringy then just bear with me. I am deviating slightly from my 3D render on this tube right here. And that's just because it's the only horizontal tube that is kind of exposed without having the side of the case kind of sandwiching it. I'm making these horizontal bars span the whole width of the frame because I'm actually going to be doing threaded rod that goes from one end to the other. That way when the sides compress together they're actually compressing onto that metal bar that's going across the whole piece. Here you can see the accuracy of what I'm getting out of my cuts and it's not perfect but it is pretty good for freehand. I'm still debating if I should do threaded rods going through the whole length of the tubing or simply welding nuts to the ends of the tubing. I feel like the threaded rod is going to be more structurally sound but having the nuts in the end of the tubing is going to be a bit easier for assembly. These two bars are by far the hardest because there's two kind of wonky angles and I had to match them up on both one end and the other end of the tube. There's no real flat parts on that it's all weird angles. I was rushing to prep everything for welding and that means I flap disked every single side of every bar and that took quite a while. I was doing this well after the sun went down but I didn't need a light because the sparks were lighting my way. I might have gone a little hot on a few pieces but it's okay there's still a ton of material left. I bought this TIG welder maybe six or eight months ago in preparation of this project and others. It was either this or the Prime Weld 225 and this one was a little bit cheaper and also had a few more features so I decided to try it out. This is going to be the first time I ever welded anything in my life. I've never even played around with a welder. I just absolute from zero. One thing they don't really tell you about TIG welding is there is a ton of prep involved. You have to grind your tungsten, you have to clean all your parts with acetone, you have to make sure everything is like almost medically sterile to get the best welds. Of course I didn't do all this on my very first welding attempts and yeah that's why you're seeing me do it now. This is my first half hour to an hour of welding from having zero experience before and yeah the results speak for themselves they're not very good. No prep work on the thinnest scrap metals I could find just blasting holes in everything and just getting a feel for the experience of TIG welding. This is hour two, day two, where I just experimented a little bit with the filler rod and still not really having any idea, but I did manage to stick two pieces of metal together. This is day three. I have about two and a half hours into experience and the welds are looking a little bit better. Having cleaned and prepped parts and also having thicker material to weld on was a lot easier. This is all just experimentation, different tungsten sizes, different grinds, different gas settings, just everything. At this point I'm not trying to make anything look good, I'm just trying to be able to perform the function of getting things to stick together and not having them just easily fall apart. This is the first joint I made and it seems to be somewhat strong so here's hoping that everything else goes okay. I know I should practice a lot more before attempting building something but I figured if I mess it up completely I'll just make another one. So I'm at the point where I just want to tack things and yeah that isn't going too hot on the first tacks for this whole build. In my practice I was able to tack some things autogenously which is without filler rod but yeah for some reason these tubings are not wanting to come together. Also those flames you're seeing right there should not be happening at all. I've been having this intermittent problem which I wanted to bring up with you guys because hopefully there's like a TIG welding expert out there that can tell me exactly what's going wrong here. 
from my research this is oxygen getting into my argon field which is causing the air to oxidate. This can be caused by contaminated argon or a leak somewhere in your gas lines. I have been troubleshooting but it's a bit difficult because this problem seems to be inconsistent. Sometimes I'll light an arc and it'll just be as expected. There won't be any weirdness or any kind of flames or any kind of air pressure feelings going on. And other times it's really bad where it's almost as if somebody has like a can of compressed air and they're just like blasting a jet stream into my argon field. I feel like TIG welding is already a pretty complicated skill to learn. That's when everything's going perfectly. So having this happen to me has been more than frustrating. One of the most frustrating parts is that when this happens, which has been a lot, is that every time you have to change your tungsten out. It's very annoying when almost every single weld you do, you have to then change your tungsten or go and regrind. It's just extremely frustrating. Some of these tacks are going down just fine, but a lot of the other ones are fighting me and giving me a lot of trouble. Like you're still seeing that happen on this one and there's going to be quite a few more. I'm such a beginner and I practically know nothing, so this also could just be bad technique on my part and that is something that I'm going to play around with. I don't think it is, but I'm not leaving that out of the realm of possibility. I also thought that maybe because I'm welding on top of magnets that they're somehow doing something weird to like the electromagnetic field and affecting the arc but I couldn't find anything when I looked that up. These tacks are not pretty but they're good enough to hold things in place for now. Another thought I had was maybe this was just severe improper torch height. I know you guys can't really see what I'm doing but that's just because this is my first time welding and I didn't really want to worry about the camera too much. So I will be doing some experiments with torch height and seeing if I can reproduce this problem or that's that's really the thing that's bothering me is like I can't get it to do it every time like sometimes it just welds just fine and then other times it's like going crazy. Maybe my filler rod is plunging a hole in my argon pocket. I did play around with my gas settings and turning it down, turning it up, and it didn't seem to make a difference. On this shot, I can actually see the arc connected to my filler rod for a split second, and that might have something to do with it. At this point, I I don't know, but if you guys have any ideas, let me know and I'll try them out. It really well could be just my lack of technique. This problem really sucks because although TIG welding is very challenging and difficult, it's also a lot of fun. So if I didn't have this problem, it would be a lot funner. This particular tack was giving me the most trouble. I tried so hard to join these two pieces together. I can join the rod to the piece. Yeah, that's exactly what I don't want to have happen. So I flipped it over and it took one second. No flames or sparks or anything. That's the thing that bothers me is because that problem is inconsistent. I just did that tack weld in like one second, no problem. As I'm getting things tacked up, I am making slight changes to some of the lengths and getting it to fit a little bit better in the frame. This tack goes seemingly just fine, although it did foul my tungsten, so it got that contaminated, so I had to switch that out. This is with a fresh tungsten, and as you'll see, it immediately starts doing that kind of like jet flame thing happening. You can see it flaming from the side, and then more sparks, and yeah, just oxidation again. I can still kind of weld when this happens, but you only get one shot and then this is what it does to your tungsten. So you either have to regrind that or just put a new one in there. And this is just me tack welding or attempting to. This isn't even fully welding out the whole frame or anything like that. I know I'm harping on this issue quite a bit, but I'm just trying to show you my first experiences with welding. I actually was hoping and I thought that I'd be further along on this particular e-bike project by now, but I did run into quite a few issues and one of those was I didn't know how to weld at all. And I had a lot more problems behind the scenes that I didn't show or film any of that. Since I bought this welder so long ago, I didn't know that it wasn't 110 volts. I was like, I'm just going to be welding some small things, I don't need a ton of power, and Turns out this welder is only 220 volt. And then my house didn't have 220 volts readily available so I had to get that all sorted out. And then I was having issues trying to get my gas tank and then when I finally got my gas cylinder 
I didn't have the correct regulator, it wouldn't fit on that fitting, so I had to either get an adapter, I just got a totally different regulator. On top of that, the welding machine had this Chinese connector that wasn't any sort of US standard. There's literally no connectors that I could buy from like Home Depot that would fit this machine. Anyway, it was just a lot of things leading up to the point where it's like then I could start welding but I didn't know how to weld so I had to take some time to even learn enough to be able to weld really badly as you're seeing here. So here we are now, it does hold itself together without needing any magnets and stuff like that so that's cool but I did make a few errors and I don't know if that's with my welding and placement or if like maybe just my cutting was off but yeah it's not supposed to look like that in the back. This was actually kind of good that this happened because it did make me rethink where I wanted this truss to sit within the frame. I wanted it a little bit lower than how I originally had it. This is so I'll have more material to hold the bolts on the side of the frame when there isn't a ton of material to begin with. Some of my tacks are semi-decent as you can see, some of them are definitely not that great at all, and it's just going to take a lot more time and experience to get better and more familiar with my welding. Also, if I can figure out that issue, it is going to make welding a lot funner and easier and have my welds come out a lot better, so I'll definitely be working on that problem. I want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end, showing you all my horrible, embarrassing welds from just being a very absolute beginner. Let me know what you guys think so far. Is it an abomination? Should I just absolutely quit welding while I'm ahead or behind? Should I stop making YouTube videos? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. In the next episode, I will be getting this sitting much more flush and hopefully all welded up, but we'll see about that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.